Hello and welcome. Now, the drama between Nigeria and crypto exchange platform Binance is, far, is fast becoming an interesting one. A few days ago, the regional manager for Binance in Africa, Nadim Anjawala, fled lawful custody and escaped from the country using what was described as smuggled passport. Now, the Office of Nigeria's National Security Advisor has since confirmed the embarrassing escape and says it is seeking Interpol's assistance to get the suspect rearrested. Anjawala, who reportedly holds dual city, uh, British and Kenyan citizenship, had been detained in Nigeria along with another colleague since February 26, when they arrived the country following a crackdown on the crypto platform. Uh, Tigran Gambaya, now their colleague, who is a, an American citizen, remains in custody. The government accuses Binance of being used to manipulate the local currency as well as launder money. And recently, Governor of Nigeria's Central Bank, uh, Olayemi Kadoso, said about $26 billion do now traded by Nigerians on the platform last year could not be traced. The matter has now gone to court. But rather than the allegations of manipulation of the local currency and money laundering, the government has charged the uh, Binance now of uh, tax infractions. Nigeria's Federal Inland Revenue Service has filed a four-count charge on tax evasion against the crypto exchange, accusing it of also of complicity now in aiding customers to evade taxes through its platform. The, uh, the charges further detail specific instances where Binance purportedly violated tax laws, such as failing to issue invoices now for VAT purposes, thus obstructing the determination and payment of taxes by subscribers. Binance has since now stopped all trading with the Nigerian, Naira, uh, Nigerian currency now on its platform. Now, it's, it's not clear how Anjawala fled custody, but reports say he actually fled from a guest house in the capital city, Abuja, after guards led him to a nearby mosque for prayers. The person responsible for his custody has been arrested and investigation is ongoing to unravel the circumstances surrounding his escape. Now, the Binance executive were being detained on court orders and are due to appear in court on April the 4th. Now, to discuss uh, this further, I'm being joined on the program by Lord Onyuke. Uh, he joins us, of course, uh, via Zoom. Uh, Lloyd, thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program. Um, just before, uh, just, just before I, I asked you the first question now, uh, we, we have... A new update now on on this uh, de development because things uh, appear to be moving very fast and uh, the latest development is that um, um, now that the Binance executive the one who is still in Nigeria that's Tigran Gambaya now who is a US citizen has actually taken legal action now against the National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission alleging violation of his fundamental human rights. So he's actually filed charges now in court and um, accusing, of course, uh, the National Security Advisor and uh, the EFCC of violating his fundamental human rights. And we also understand that Nadim, Nadim Anjawala, that's the Binance executive who escaped, has also initiated um, court proceedings against... Uh, the, the Nigerian government, especially against the National Security Advisor. And uh, so both cases are now in court. These two individuals have now initiated cases uh, uh, against the Nigerian government. Uh, this is in addition to, of course, the charges filed by uh, the Federal Inland Revenue Service. So, Lloyd, just give me your take on all of this and this latest development. Thank you so much uh, i appreciate you for having me also on this program um so it's uh it's a bit bizarre how we um, arrived at this point uh with this on this issue uh first of all you would expect that um our government should have actually followed all the uh processes of arbitration, should I call it that, uh, the legal uh, requirements for um, either suing Binance mm. or seeking redress uh, without actually detaining its um, executives beyond the uh, required uh, space of time. 
But, but they said they got, uh, they got a, a court so order to do that. I'm sorry? Yeah, the, the, the NSA says that they got a court order to do that, I mean, to, to, for the detention, so that this was lawful detention anyway. Yes, but then uh, the, the issue would be for how long are they supposed to have held them? What, what does the court order say? What does the law, even in Nigeria? I'm not making a case for Binance. In mm. fact, I find their operations uh, questionable largely, despite the fact that there's a disparity between the figures presented by uh, the regulatory bodies here, uh, 26 billion dollars, which uh, uh, we're told are intractable. Mm. And then the, the mentioned figure of about $21 million. Despite that, what I, my expectation really is that Nigeria should have, within the framework of the law, either granted them bail and then done their proper investigation to follow the processes that our laws and international laws require hmm. for us to be able to arrive at the conclusive uh, point in this, uh, shall I call it misunderstanding, between Binance and the Nigerian government. But if we go back a little bit, we, we realize, looking at the entire uh, drama, hmm. so to speak, it calls to question a number of things. First of all, you want to ask yourself, uh, when you hear the, the, your first reaction, and for some of us, the first reaction was uh, that we thought that perhaps we, we were coming to a point where we could say that the operations of, uh, of, of certain agencies of government have come to a point where a great level of confidence and professionalism would be seen in the operations. Um, I would have thought that it would be a very ridiculous uh, phase, hmm. orange, for a Binance executive or even the executive of any company, whether within Nigeria or external nationals, uh, multinationals, uh, foreign companies such as Binance, to escape and elude yeah. our security infrastructure and agency in such a manner as this gentleman, Nadim, left. So I see in my mind, and a lot of people have come out to say this, that the government appears to be, you know, it's what, what is called a catch-22 situation. Do they agree and, I, and indeed, that's what it boils down to agree that this escape was made without their knowledge. Ridiculous, really, how no less an office than that of the National Security Advisor would have this albatross, this burden on his shoulders, you know, uh, to own that a fugitive, as it were, escaped custody mm. in this very bizarre uh questionable uh strange episode so if the government says that he didn't escape and indeed as you know the statement from the office of the national security advisor uh for want of a better word or for decency it's rather strange that we're hearing things like well if anybody has information that could lead to the arrest yeah. re-arrest of uh of Mr. Anjawal, Anjawala, uh, kindly reach out to the office of the, of the NSA. It's, 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 it's strange uh, well, just to maintain. Well, I, 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 I get your point. Uh, yeah. Of course, they say they're still using the um, Interpol now to try to get him. But let me ask you this. Um, you know, initially this whole discussion, I mean, wh when this whole thing started, it was about, you know, m the issue of money laundering, terrorism financing and all of that. Terrorism. And that Binance was being used to, to manipulate the local currency. But then when the case went to court, you look at the charges that have been filed against uh, Binance and, and these individuals, they are all related to tax evasion. How, how do you reconcile that? Because we're not talking about 
there's no talk about uh, you know money laundering anymore and, and terrorism financing and manipulation of the local financing. currency. How, how do you explain that? Why do you think the government decided to, yeah. to, to go that route? Spot on, Deji. Yeah, I mean your your analysis is fine. And and to further dissect that, I would say, so we are able to, as human beings, we we operate by association. Uh, when we have an experience here, and then further down the line, we see something similar. We tend to naturally, consciously or subconsciously, draw a line, link all of all of this. So you see, a while ago and it's still ongoing, the prosecution of the former CBN um, uh, 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 governor, uh, Godwin Emefiele, a number of charges were were raised against him, mm. right? You know, a, a catalog of charges, including terrorism financing and a whole lot of other things, as you know. But strangely, if you check the charge sheets and if you check what He's been prosecuted for at the end of the day you find that it's rather a very flimsy charge compared to the catalog of of the excuses and, 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 and the accusations that the government and the agencies had brought up at an issue my take and which is what a number of persons have also said is that perhaps we have a situation where the government doesn't do its homework properly before coming out to make allegations, to make arrests, to detain and charge uh, uh, suspects. Otherwise, if there was hard evidence, if there was really hard evidence supporting that uh, there's been uh, money laundering mm. and that Binance was a conduit to financing terrorism, if there was any useful evidence, the government won't hesitate to brandish it and show and show the courts and show Nigerians that this is what's going on. But I think that there's probably lack of substance. And then we know what has been the operations, except change yesterday in Nigeria, where uh, apparently charges, accusations are made, arrests are made by, say, the EFCC, and other agencies, anti graft agencies. And then it is at the point of arrest, when the person is in detention, that's when it appears that uh, the EFCC or the govern government agency storms the office of that of this person, cuts away files and loads of ev apparently evidences, you know, to begin to see through and mm. to see if they can make sense out of anything that they can use to support the pillars on which they want to build their case. Essentially, now can, can we say the the, the reason uh, that probably the, the the reason why the government decided to go the route of uh, tax evasion is that it's something that can easily be proven in court. Uh, just as you said, it might not, just not be easy to prove, you know, a case of money laundering, manipulation of the local currency, and all of that. Uh, so that's the reason yeah. why the government decided to go through yes, this route and yes, possibly yes, uh, create a window for settlement so that Binance is able to make. Uh, some payment, at least that the government makes something out of this. Yes, I, so it's a case of low-hanging fruits. Mm. I mean, the government obviously has realized that, uh, and really, Deji, when you look at it, I can tell you that at least 60% of business is running in this country right now. Uh, when you really look down into their books, you probably find Evasion of VAT, VAT payment, yeah. uh, non-remittance of one, 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 one fee or the other, whether CAC filing, uh, returns, and all that. And so those are low-hanging fruits that, I mean, anybody, when you really look down deep, mm. you would find that whether on their part or because you opened the door a bit for uh, those doing business with them to evade these things, it's there. You're going to find it. And so, so it tells you it gives you an idea that mm. there's a, a, a bit of mediocrity and the inability of someone to do his homework properly. So there's the laxity, there's the, uh, there's, so there's drudgery. You, you, you get that feeling when you look at things like this. There's a, there was a whole lot of balls, really. When we had the figures about $26 billion funnel, funnel through 
you know, the conduit, the channel of their transactions over a year, you felt that, oh, that's something tangible. That's a mm. then. Well, unfortunately, we, we lost him there. And uh, I, w I think we'll, we'll just have to end it there. That's how much we can take on, on, on this segment of the show. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back to discuss other matters. Stay with us. Don't go away. <laughs> 